Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Deep Understanding of Research Papers. Today, in this tutorial, I am going to explain uh, a paper called uh, Joint CTC Attention Based End-to-End -end, uh, Speech Recognition Using Multitask uh, Training. So this paper is by Suyun Kim, Takaki Hori and Shinji uh, Watanabe. So there is no S here, sorry about that. So uh, this paper is about uh, how do we combine the CTC loss function and uh, attention uh, uh, function which we use in sequence to sequence model to uh, build a effective robust end-to-end uh, -end speech recognition model and uh, this approach of combining different types of losses and to train a single base model is called uh, multitask learning also known as MTL and uh, we will see how this multitask learning approach uh, uh, which uh, there uh, whereby uh, the losses are CTC loss and attention loss uh, improved uh, the accuracy of uh, the uh, accuracy of uh, speech recognition systems trained uh, alone CTC alone or uh, just attention model. Basically, the whole idea of this uh, approach or multitask training approach is to improve the accuracy of of the other systems, which at that time uh, the state of that system was uh, attention based uh, sequence to sequence model or something also known as listen, attend and spell model. So uh, we'll see uh, first the overview of this paper and then we'll see uh, the joint CTC attention mechanism and uh, finally we'll see the experimental uh, setup and results. Right. So uh, as I said, uh, this model which is basically combining the CTC loss plus attention loss uh, actually improves uh, the state of the art accuracy at that time back in 2017 uh, uh, so 2017 so where that time the state of the art systems were uh, the attention based sequence to sequence model or also known as listen attend and spell model and uh, the problem with attention based model or uh, listen attend and spell model even though it had accuracy better than uh, CTC model uh, the the problem with listen attend and spell or attention based models was uh, they were not working very well in the case of uh, noisy conditions or uh, sometimes they were also failing uh, in the case of uh, in the case where the utterance is very long so when i say utterance is very long basically the audio uh, the audio you feed as input to the encoder is very long the attention mechanism won't work because of the uh, because the the attention it has to put over the entire audio is uh, very long Basically, the audio is very long. The uh, the it was not able to capture the dependencies uh, from the uh, from the beginning. So that's what the, this case is saying. That the thing is, uh, in the noisy conditions, the attention model was suffering. That's what they observed, and also uh, the system was trying very hard to learn uh, uh, for inputs which are very long. Basically, the long inputs, long uh, utterances. So this paper actually uh, combines the CTC loss and uh, to the attention loss in the sequence to sequence model to build the robust speech recognition model. And uh, the advantage with, uh, the, it actually takes the advantages from CTC and it takes advantages from attention model or sequence to sequence uh, or at LAS model, uh, I'll just say LAS, listen, listen, listen attend and spell model. And they combine those two uh, losses uh, to build the best, uh, to get the best out of both both of the loss loss functions, right? So that is that is what is called multitask learning uh, system or le multitask learning framework here. And the advantage with using CTC along with attention is uh, the the thing with CTC is when you when you use a CTC loss function, we use something called dynamic time warping, or also known as uh, DP, or dynamic time warping, or also known as forward backward algorithm. Uh, which is used to train uh, the uh, dynamic programming or uh, one pass DP what people call forward backward algorithm uh, is sort of like Viterbi you can think of it as a Viterbi model uh, Viterbi uses uh, forward backward so it uses this forward backward algorithm which actually gives you some sort of alignment with the alignment of the speech with the text speech with the text means it's audio with the uh, the hypothesis which is the predict predicted text so since this one pass DP uh, or uh, the dynamic programming using forward backward algorithm already gives you some sort of uh, some sort of uh, alignment between the input audio and the output text, it actually helps in converging uh, the attention model much faster. So basically the attention model, the idea of attention model is the same thing where you, you want to find the alignment between the input uh, which is a speech sequence 
with the text right so this this process will be will not be very efficient uh, if you don't use ctc i uh, will in fact will show you some pictures there you will see how why ctc attention the way attention only based model suffers in this to get this alignment the idea of attention is to generate this sort of alignment right so alignment is nothing but uh, attention what people used to call before is alignment and these days what people call it as uh, uh, what people call it as attention they are same thing but this attention based only only attention based model actually suffers in getting this alignment right but if you use ctc the ctc also actually helps because of forward backward algorithm to get this uh, the alignment uh, alignment very good and also the convergence will be very fast because it is already giving you giving some sort of uh, signal to get this alignment proper using this forward backward algorithm so that the attention model also refines it and so that the accuracy or even the uh, the uh, convergence will be much faster we'll see all those results in the coming slides and uh, we'll see uh, using as i said uh, using these two i mean getting best out of both these both of the these losses will actually get a little bit improvement in uh, the a little bit improvement compared to the state of that uh, uh, accuracy basically, basically the character error rate uh, it, they actually show they get relative of uh, 5.4 to 14.6 relative improvements over uh, compare uh, relative improvements compared to the previous uh, methods which are basically ctc only model or attention only based uh, speech recognition models so we are going to explain this paper the main contribution of this paper in three sections basically we will first introduce what is ctc ctc loss for speech recognition and we'll see this attention encoder decoder method which is basically listen attend and spell model uh, we'll just see the loss functions basically you can think of it as i'll explain lctc and uh, l attention basically i'll just explain those two equations rest you can refer to the papers this is like standard paper this is a deep speech paper you can just refer to it and and main contribution of this paper is this multitask learning where you can combine the ctc loss with the um, attention loss and uh, you can get the final loss you can call this mtl loss but uh, these two losses are not added directly they were scaled by some parameter called lambda and uh, we'll see the we'll see uh, that this lambda is also hyperparameter and you can tune it and uh, based on the values of lambda you also get you can also do an experiment of getting accuracy or cer right so this is the whole thing so i'll explain it uh, i'll explain these three first and then we'll go to the experiments and uh, results section let's dive into what is ctc ctc or connection is temporal uh, classification loss basically if you go back to ctc whatever whatever this connection uh, temporal classification loss which was introduced in 2005 for handwritten digit recognition by alex graves alex graves and uh, with along with uh, schmiduber uh, when uh, he was doing phd in his lab so the idea of uh, connection is temporal classification is if you have an input let's say x1 x2 and so on xt and you have an, let's say output y1 y2 so on y uh, let's say m right so basically what you want to do is you want to these two are the input output pairs you can think of it as this is one input sequence this is one output sequence basically you want to uh, basically usually in speech it will be like sequence of frames audio frames or mfcc frames and this sequence of characters like a b c d or hello something like that right so you want to build a model which takes this as input and this as output right so you can simply use a recurrent neural network back then uh, back in 2014 or 15 the sequence sequence models were not available so they had only lstm somehow given uh, input uh, as inputs x1 x2 xt to the lstm the lstm x to, x to predict uh, y1 y2 ym but if you use lstm just one lstm no sequence sequence just one lstm uh, this is not possible why because the length of this which is t and length of this are not same so basically you want to make the length of this and this same basically you what you do is you create a uh, you feed y, uh, y prime as input uh, basically let me write the equations again so all we are interested in is uh, finding the uh, maximizing the probability of y given x right assume x y is a ground truth which is basically the whatever the sentence you are speaking let's say you speak hello this is my audio and you have the words hello hello word hello and uh, this you can think of sequence of characters i am interested in finding ma or maximizing this function or maximizing this probability distribution what i could do is since the length of uh, this and this are not same i am going to introduce uh, some blank symbols some repetitive symbols and finally i am going to make this length and this length same and i for given y 
I get so many combinations of phi, which is actually coming from some uh, function space phi, when you feed y star as input, or it should be y as input, and you get pi, which is basically if y is hello, and uh, y could be h underscore underscore l l underscore underscore something like that, right? And you want to maximize the probability of pi uh, pi uh, given x, right? So this is what you want to maximize. But uh, th this, this we'll see how, how we get this. And this is this is what I want. Uh, what I'm interested. But uh, what happens is uh, when you, when you are working with CTC, this uh, there is something called conditional independence of the outputs. Basically, uh, given pi t at time t, it's actually independent of all other pi uh, t, uh, all other uh, i uh, which is not equal to t, right? Something like that. So basically, uh, what you could say is a output. Uh, uh, output at any point of time is actually independent of all other outputs right it actually depends only on that particular input this is called conditionally independence uh, uh, in conditionally independence uh, uh, assumption what they have made so it's basically you uh, you can break break this thing into uh, this this thing will become uh, sort of like uh, pi goes from uh, 1 to capital t uh, probability of pi t given x t right sorry about that this pen is not working fine but anyway, this is what uh, I'm showing here. So basically, pi uh, uh, probability of pi given x can be decomposed as product of class conditionals, and each conditional is uh, independent of other uh, others. And finally, the last function could be this. Uh, I think they are missing the summation over uh, n equal to one to n. Basically, you want to sum over all the inputs, all the input sequences of your data. So this is what I am interested. This is called the CTC loss, right? This is the CTC loss. But implementing or getting this sort of uh, getting this this because alignments can be in the infinitely many because if you have hello I can construct infinite number of uh, uh, alignment f I mean not in exactly infinite let's say pretty large number of alignment uh, sequences right so that's why uh, they go with uh, this forward backward algorithm to optimize directly this term using forward backward algorithm you can actually work out the math and find out that this term is actually coming close to this term if you uh, use forward backward algorithm this can be this is a forward backward algorithm you can optimize directly instead of doing all these things right so this is what uh, Alex, Alex Graves showed this is the CTC loss if you use only the CTC loss you get some improve uh, some better accuracy compared to old state of the art systems which are GMM HMM or DNA HMM system that's what these guys have proved in fact the deep speech the idea is the same thing Coming to attention based encoder decoder model, which is nothing but LAS model, uh, also known as listen, attend, and spell model. Basically, they, uh, they had a sequence of sequence model. Let's say there were two LSTMs. One is called uh, encoder, and another is called decoder. So, the encoder decoder algorithms are two LSTMs, right? So, these two LSTMs are uh, actually connected. Uh, like, if uh, let's say you feed sequence of speech features, and the LSTM takes input and uh, give some context vector based on the attention and decoder will keep predicting the symbols like uh, whatever hello something like that right so basically the idea of this is uh, given sequence of variable length uh, input sequence you can predict variable length output sequence without having any alignment problem but the alignment can be obtained by using something called attention basically the attention the idea of attention is to uh, look back at the input sequence while predicting current output sequence let's say when you are predicting hello or l after HE, you can actually go back and look at the input speech vector, input uh, hidden state vectors, and you somehow weight them so that uh, using some sort of something called attention weights, you weight them and get the weighted average of those those uh, input vectors, and you can use them, use that summed vector, that weight, weighted uh, average of those input hidden vectors as input to the prediction of prediction at time t. Right, that's basically called a context vector, right? So that way you can make the system to find alignment between uh, the input, which is basically uh, the audio features, let's say sequence of audio features, with whatever prediction it makes, the character sequence, hello, right? So basically, if everything is fine, the attention should be sort of like this, right? No, will not be exactly, uh, I mean, exactly uh, linear, but somehow it should be like this, right? This is, this is just like in machine translation. 
But the problem is uh, this attention may not work very well in the no case of noisy conditions, also in the case of long uh, input sequences, if the audio is very long. So uh, to take care of that, uh, they, use, uh, they use this multitask learning. We'll uh, see that in the next slide. So these are, the just e these are just equations. As I explained, this is just attention model. Uh, you can, if you want more details, you can just read the LAS paper, listen, attend, and spell paper by, um, by actually by Google, actually uh, work, work done at Google. Right. This is the thing. Now uh, we'll see the actual contribution of this paper. So this paper, as I said, is basically multitask learning uh, uh, framework. Basically, you have an encoder. This encoder is basically uh, LSTM, right? Assume LSTM, and it takes sequence of speech features as input, right? This X1, uh, let me write it here. X1, X2, and so on till XT is nothing but uh, speech features, right? Or MFCC features. Now, this speech, fe speech features as goes as input to the bidirectional LSTM. So, this is my by LSTM, by LSTM. And the by LSTM actually, it may have stacked by LSTM. So, assume the after by LSTM, you get uh, this uh, hidden state representation H1, H2, so on, HL. So, I'll tell you why L. So, you get hidden state representation for feeding uh, fixed, uh, for feeding it T time, uh, the feeding an input of length T, right? You can ask me a question, since bidirectional LSTM takes every input and produce one output, why is this the length of L is not same as T? So basically, if you look at this here, they are doing some sort of subsampling, right? They are not using all the time steps output, they are just using something like uh, L, uh, after, I mean every three, three frames, every three frames they are using one frame. Right, something like that. So this is a lot of subsampling. You can think of it as so. L will be always less than t in this case. In fact, we'll show that uh, uh, L is equal to t by four in the coming uh, uh, slides. This is basically that's it. So now this L dimensional hidden vectors actually goes as input to the two heads here. One head is called attention decoder head. Another is head is called CTC head. The CTC head is actually the same old uh, deep speech model, which actually takes this hidden representation and uh, just keeps predicting uh, the character underscores and finally will collapse everything into uh, sequence of uh, characters and become sequence of words, right? And assume there is no LM uh, involved in this, right? This is one thing. Now you have an attention decoder, which is actually the same old decoder model in the sequence to sequence framework. As I said, you have in the sequence to sequence framework, you had uh, two LSTM. One is encoder LSTM and another is decoder LSTM. They are connected by attention, right? So it's the same thing here. So you have uh, attention decoder. Basically, uh, these uh, A, S, and Y1, Y2, they were all defined in the previous uh, slide. You can take a look at it or take a look at the paper. So this just uh, assumes a sort of uh, same old uh, uh, sequence to sequence model decoder with attention, right? Now you get two losses. Once you get this encoder output, you are feeding this encoder output into two models, two heads, you can say. This is uh, CTC and uh, this is CTC and this is my attention model, or attention decoder. Uh, sorry about the pen here. So now you have NLMTL, which is basically the multitask learning uh, loss, which is basically weighted combination or linear combination of CTC loss and attention loss, but weighted by some parameters called lambda. These are tunable parameters. This lambda could be anywhere between uh, zero or one, right? You can choose the value of lambda and train the model, see the accuracy, and you can keep vary the lambda, and you can fix the lambda uh, whenever you get the accuracy, uh, better accuracy, right? So that is all about this paper. Actually, the whole paper can be explained in this uh, picture. You have a, a two uh, head or multitask learning setup where you are using two different losses, and you are using a single uh, shared encoder to train the model. And obviously, obviously, uh, the the problem of attention alignment is solved here because you are using DP or one pass dynamic programming or forward, forward backward algorithm to get the alignment between the input and output in a dynamic, uh, dynamic programming framework. That is going to in turn help this attention decoder because this attention decoder uh, gets I mean, it's stuck into a problem whenever you have longer inputs and noisy data, right? So that's all it is. So this is actually giving some sort of boost up into the attention model to get the alignment right so that the accuracy will be better. So that is the whole idea of this paper. So coming to the experiments, uh, they use uh, two different data sets, uh, actually three different data sets, WSJ1, which is of 81 hours, and WSJ0, 15 hours. 
and uh, chime uh, for 18 hours data this chime is actually uh, is a noisy data set collected in home environment you might be using for example let's say if you use google home you keep the device in one place and talk to the device from multiple places like maybe kitchen uh, living room like different different places and there will be a lot of noise also so this is that sort of setup this is highly noisy setup and uh, for the inputs they use 40 dimensional LM, uh, lmfe feature basically log mill filter bank energy features with first and second order temporal derivatives which basically gives 40 plus 40 plus 40 which is 120 features per frame and uh, uh, for attention, uh, since since uh, we are predicting at uh, we, are, we are predicting character by character, uh, the uh, number of characters could be 26 English character plus uh, all these uh, uh, all these special symbols along with the uh, start of the sentence and end of the sentence tokens. And in CTC, we don't use all these uh, start of the end end of the uh, end of the sentence tokens. We just use extra character which is underscore. So totally will be 26 plus one for CTC and uh, 20 sorry 32 for uh, attention based model right so also coming to the architecture design uh, they use uh, in the encoder they use four layer bi-directional LST, stm with 320 cells in each direction basically uh, after every layer you get uh, 640 dimensional hidden vector then uh, <coughs> uh, then as i said uh, the top layer will uh, you will have uh, L which is basically the number of uh, hidden states which is T by 4. If your T is 100 or if your T is let's say 40 then your L will be only 10 right because you are doing some sort of subsampling here. Then coming to the decoder it's a one layer decoder uh, with uh, it's a single layer LSTM not by LSTM with 320 cells hidden, hidden vector and uh, they use ADA delta for uh, uh, training the model which is basically the optimizer and also they use gradient clipping to avoid the the avoid the gradient explosion problem and uh, the weights are initialized between uh, the range of minus 0 0.1 to plus 0 0.1 sort of looks like a, uh, Xavier uh, I mean it's not a Xavier initialization it's a uniform initialization and uh, they use the lambda which we were talking about the weighting parameter which is actually changed from 0 0.2 0 0.5 and 0 0.8 and uh, during decoding they use uh, beam search but remember they don't use any LM here, just beam search, right? So coming to the results, uh, results are uh, quite interesting. Here you can see uh, for the WSJ1, uh, uh, the 80 hours uh, data, uh, they, have, uh, they have put uh, CER for validation and evaluation. If you look at uh, the MTL model, which is the current paper, actually they get the state of the art at that point of time in 2017, right? So that is the state of the art even for the, eval even for the validation, right? and they have also seen the results for varying lambda and if you look at the WSJ0 which is the 15 hours data they actually these guys only get the state of the art which is 23.03 both for eval and dev and if you look at chime uh, phi uh, uh, chime phi data chime phi data you actually get uh, the state of the art is again uh, this model itself but the improvement is a bit higher compared to this one attention based model or CTC based model because as I said uh, the system is uh, pretty robust for noisy conditions right as you can see the attention model suffers uh, in the case of noisy condition as you can see the the system is actually not not even better than uh, CTC model CTC model at that point of time people showed the CTC the attention model is better than CTC but in the case of noisy environment this actually fails right context aware uh, context aware based uh, uh, attention fails but location sensitive attention is actually winning a little bit uh, it's the same case and uh, actually the mtl performs much better uh, this is sort of uh, 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 graph for uh, graph of uh, epoch uh, with respect to the character rate basically shows how f how f how fast the system is converging as you, as you can see the ctc is very slow and even if it's not going beyond 60% uh, uh, CER. Uh, but if you see the last curve, which is this uh, this curve, which is the red thick uh, uh, green line, 0.8, this is actually converging faster, right? So converging faster and also the accuracy is not that great, but convergence of this, this thing is faster, as you can see in the graph, with respect to the number of epochs. 
and finally we'll see this graph this is what uh, is very interesting because as i said initially the al attention only based lst team actually suffers during training in the case of noisy conditions uh, as you can see this is the attention map for uh, you can think of this x-axis as attention uh, audio and audio features and this is a character uh, during first epoch this uh, attention map is completely uh, junk i mean junk means it's random and after ninth epoch you are getting some sort of alignment like one line here one line here still not good but if you use mtl first epoch is random second epoch is not that great but if you say fifth epoch the actually attention weight attention is pretty uh, pretty good this attention is also called alignment you can just take that because usually people call it as attention uh, alignment before like back in 90s but now people started calling it as attention but anyway both are same so this alignment or attention is actually pretty good in the case of mtl right compared to uh, that attention only based model right this is the nice thing about this paper for the for this audio in the libre speech or sorry in the chimey 4 evaluation data right and uh, that's all for this tutorial uh, thank you so much for watching uh, uh, if you are not subscribed to my channel please subscribe and uh, for more content and if you like this video please give a thumbs up thank you